Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, when the world was still very new, there lived the camel. He resided in the desert and survived on sticks and milkweed. The camel preferred the company of only himself. In fact, he preferred it so much that when anyone spoke to him, all he would reply was, Humph! and not a word more. On the first Monday morning, the horse came to him wearing a saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth. He said to the camel, <coughs> Camel! Come and trot like the rest of us! Humph! replied the camel. The horse went away and told the man what had happened. On Tuesday morning, the dog went to the camel, carrying a stick in his mouth, and said, <coughs> Camel, come and fetch, like the rest of us. <coughs> Humph, replied the camel. The dog went away and told the man what had happened. On Wednesday morning, the ox went to the camel, wearing a yoke on his neck, and said, Camel, come and plough, like the rest of us. Humph replied the camel. The ox went away and told the man what had happened. At the end of the day on Thursday, when all the work was finished, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox. Three, oh my three, he said. It grieves me to say this, but because that creature in the desert will not work, you must work double to make up for it. This made the horse and the dog and the ox very angry. They held a meeting at the edge of the desert. The camel came chewing his milkweed and laughed at them. This made them even more upset. And so they decided to call upon a genie. Or as they are also called a djinn. The djinn, who is in charge of all deserts, arrived faster than they expected. He arrived rolling in a cloud of dust. Who calls me? We do, said the horse. Djinn of the deserts, is it right for anyone not to work with the world so new? It is not, said the djinn. Well, said the horse, there is a creature in the middle of your desert. He has a long neck and long legs, but he refuses to work. And so we must work double in place of him. That would be my camel. What does he say? He, he says, humph, replied the dog. And he won't do a spot of work. Does he say anything else? Only humph, replied the ox. And he won't do a spot of work. Well, I'll humph him. If you will kindly wait here, I will see about this. The djinn called upon the sand to surround him and off he went in his cloud of dust into the desert. He found the camel by a pool of water in his usual state of idleness. My friend, what is this I hear of you doing not a spot of work with the world so new? Humph! said the camel. The dog the horse and the ox have had more work because you will not help them. Humph, said the camel. Do you think it fair that you spend your days here lolling about 
while they toil away? Humph! said the camel. If I were you, I would not say that again. I shall give you only one warning. I want you to walk. But the camel yet again replied, Humph! And in that moment, when he looked down at his own reflection in the water, he saw his back growing into a hump. Look upon it, said the djinn. Now you'll have your very own hump, which you have brought on yourself because you did not want to work. The day is Thursday, and you have been idle since Monday when the work began. Now you shall go to work. How can I work now, Jin, with this hump on my back? Ah, but it serves a purpose. Because you missed three days of work, you will now be able to work for three days without food or water. Your hump will store enough fat for you to live off of for three days. And don't ever say I did nothing for you, for few creatures will ever have that bestowed upon them. Now, come out of the desert and join the horse and the dog and the ox. And remember to behave yourself. Well, I prefer to be on my own, Jin, said the camel. Why? You should like to stay here idling about all by yourself when there is important work to be done. And what a friendship, companionship. The horse, the dog and the ox have the company of one another. Should you not like to have that as well? Well, well I suppose I shouldn't mind it. And should you not be kind and fair and help them? so that they do not have to do not just their own work, but yours as well? Go and see for yourself. And so, the camel joined the horse, the dog, and the ox. And from that day to this, the camel wears a hump. But he is yet to catch up with the three days that he missed when the world was so new. But he did find friendship and companionship. He learned that it was good to be kind and fair and was happier for it. The End Hello children. Don't forget you can listen to all my stories on YouTube at Granny McDuff. Close our eyes so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>